Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the System Activity Reporter, the SAR command, which is going to help us in getting a historical view at the performance of our server. I'm going to show you how to install it. I'll even show you how to determine when it runs. And I'll also show you how to run it manually as well. So this video is going to be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, I just want to mention a few quick things. If your server is a production server, then I'm hoping you've already installed all available updates. That's very important. There's entire documentation articles that go over how to secure your Linode instance, so definitely check that out. Assuming that you've already done your due diligence and you know your server is set up just the way you like it, we can go ahead and continue. So the first thing we're going to do is install the SAR command. And to do that, I'll update my package sources. Just run sudo apt update. And there we go. And next what we'll do is install a package. And the package that we'll install is sysdat. That's the package that actually includes the SAR command. So we'll run sudo apt install sysdat, just like that. And in my case, it was already installed. It may or may not be installed on your end, but in my case, I didn't even have to install this package because it's already present. However, just having the sysdat package installed isn't enough by itself. What we're going to want to do is customize some defaults. Specifically, we'll run sudo nano, or whatever your text editor of choice happens to be. And the file that we're going to edit is slash etsy slash default, then slash sysdat, just like that. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, collecting stats is currently disabled. It's disabled by default. So what we're going to want to do is actually change this to true, just like that. So I'll save the file, control O and then enter, control X to exit out, and there we go. And that's the only config file that we'll edit at this time. But I do want to point you guys to the existence of a few other configuration files that you might want to edit. Now the default should be fine for most of you, but if you're curious, there's a few additional files, so I'll show you guys those files right now. And the first one is slash etsy, cron.d, and then sysdat. And these defaults should be fine for most of you. But what it's going to do right now is give us an activity report every 10 minutes. And then near to the end of the day, it's going to rotate the statistics file. And we can see the commands and the schedule right here for cron. That's pretty cool. So if you want to customize that, you can do that. But again, the default should be fine for most of you. Next, what we're going to do is cut out the contents of slash Etsy, sysdat, and then again, sysdat. And you can feel free to check out this file at your leisure if you want to see some additional options that you can configure. It's beyond the scope of this particular video, but I just want to let you guys know that this file exists and it contains some additional configuration that might be useful for you. All right, so now that we have the SAR command installed, and the defaults are set up such that it's going to run every 10 minutes, we should actually have a data file on our file system by now. So for example, what you could do is run ls against the slash var log, and then the sysdat directory. And you might actually see a data file in this directory. If you don't see one, just go ahead and wait a few minutes. Like I mentioned earlier, this actually runs by default every 10 minutes. So whether or not you actually have a file here depends on if 10 minutes has passed since you've installed the sysdat package. And in my case, as you can see right here, I do have a data file. I actually customized mine to run every two minutes, not necessarily something that I think you should do, but because I'm recording, I just wanted to make this happen a bit quicker. And as you can see, I do have this data file. So how exactly do you run the SAR command? Let's see an example. So I'll start off the command with sudo. We do need root privileges for this command. And we're going to run the SAR command with dash u, dash f, and then we'll type the path to the data file that we'll use for the SAR command, which was in var log, and it was in the sysdat directory, and it was SA22. In case you're curious, today is the 22nd of the month, so if you're curious why the file was named in this way, well, now you know. Anyway, let's go ahead and press enter, and we can see some very useful information here. 
It shows us the date. It also gives us the name of the image right here as well. And we have some information about the CPU. And what I'm going to do is shrink the font size down just a little bit because all the information was wrapped. And now you should be able to see it a little bit better. We actually have the load average as of this particular time right here. So what we could do is see what the overall usage of the server was at any given time using the SAR command. That's really cool. So let's go ahead and see some additional examples of the SAR command. And the next example is going to be a bit simpler. We're going to run SAR-U just like that. And what we're seeing right here is the same output more or less. The SAR-U command is going to give us the current usage of the server, which as you can see right here, isn't all that high. I don't have a whole lot going on right now. That's to be expected. My system is mostly idle. So until I actually install an app on this instance, then, well, there's really not a whole lot for it to do. So as you can see, we have the same output here. The dash U option is going to give us the current usage up to now. It's going to use the data file by default. And as you can see right here, it has the information about this particular server and the usage as of this particular time, 4 o'clock PM. We see the load average and we see the idle right here. And as you can see, we are currently mostly idle. I don't have anything installed on this instance just yet, so there's not a whole lot for it to do, but we were able to pull the information with SAR-U. That was really easy to do, and that's awesome. Now let's see another trick. Let's run SAR-R and let's see what happens. So what we're seeing right here is information pertaining to memory usage that can be very useful to have. And not to be outdone, we also have SAR dash capital S for swap. If we want to look at the swap usage and I'll do that right now. And we can see how much swap is free and how much swap is used. In my case, of course, I have nothing going on right now. So I'm all zeros straight across. This is how much swap is free. We have how much swap is used. So you know what? My server is pretty healthy right now. If your machine is running very slow and you're not really sure why, then what you could do is run SAR dash B and this will help us see information about input output. Sometimes input and output can slow down a server if nothing else is showing that it's busy. So I'll press enter. So we can see all the IO information for the server, as you can see here. So again, if you experience any slowdown, it might be a good idea to check out the IO of your server and see if there's anything that's overly writing or being read from the disk. And maybe that'll help you in understanding what the bottleneck happens to be on your server if there is one. But if nothing else, you now know how to check out the IO information using the SAR command. And of course, there's other examples in the article that accompanies this particular video. You can check that article out to learn even more. You could also check out the man pages for the SAR command. There's some additional information there as well. And if nothing else, the SAR command is going to run in the background because it runs automatically by default and it's going to collect information over time. So that way, if I notice any degradation of performance, I can use the SAR command to see historically how busy the server has been, and if it's trending as overly busy, maybe I need to enlarge the instance. But if nothing else, the SAR command is going to run in the background because, well, like I mentioned, it does that by default, and it's going to collect information over time, and I'll be able to use the SAR command to see that information, especially if I'm noticing any bottlenecks or slowdown over time. I could check out historically how the server has been behaving and responding, and maybe I'll notice a trend that'll help me figure out exactly what the problem might be. So as you can see, the System Activity Reporter is very useful when it comes to taking a look at the overall performance health of your Linux installation, and I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please be sure to click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you found value with this content and other people should see it as well. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.